Folks, the black white home ownership rate uh, in this country is at its widest gap in more than a decade. The national rate for home ownership is 65.5% for African Americans. It is 44%. Uh, it has never actually exceeded 50%. And we've seen what has happened uh, since the Fair Housing Act of 1968. Uh, that number has actually dropped at one point to almost 40%. Uh, we lost a significant amount of wealth uh, during the uh, home foreclosure crisis from 2006 all the way through present day. Some 53% of black wealth was wiped out due to the home foreclosure crisis. And so we still right now are dealing with a massive housing crisis in this country because in 2010 to 2020, we had the fewest number of homes built in the United States since the 1930s, it was less than 10 million. We pretty much averaged uh, about 20 million homes being built for per decade from 1940 through 2010. That was not the case with 2010, 2020. Uh, and so there's a black owned firm that's trying to impact this. Ashley Bell is the founder and CEO of Ready Life uh, and Montel Williams is a Ready Life advisor. Uh, Ashley's in LA, Montel is in Miami. Glad to have both of you here. So for folks who don't know, uh, Ashley, uh, you were on before uh, talking about this here. So exactly uh, what is uh, Ready Life and how have y'all uh, had an impact on helping African Americans get home ownership? Well, thank you, Roland. It's good to be with you again. Uh, good to see you briefly in Salt Lake City at our brother Kenny's uh, event he had there. Um, just always good to be in conversations around uplifting our folks. And Ready Life is at the heart of helping us just rethink what we've been through. And when you think about credit scores, most people, Roland, are going to sit here and say, you know, well, credit scores are the only way to get a mortgage. My, my credit is, is the barrier. But the reality is that credit scores weren't invented until 1981. There was a world without credit scores. They have not always been in our lives. But what we've seen with credit scores are that they've been a, a, the, the source of black mental health challenges, people feeling ashamed by these three digits, people feeling like these three digits control their entire life. And the reality is that we believe that you can qualify for a home by your rent payment primarily instead of your credit score. And so, look, in Atlanta, the average rent in Atlanta is $1,530. The average mortgage in Atlanta is $1,538. So there's an $8 difference between owning and renting. Yep. But the person who's renting is paying it every month, but they don't create the equity and create the wealth. That's what we're trying to change. Uh, Montel, what, what, what people have to understand uh, we had all of these uh, banks complaining about uh, toxic assets. We all remember 2007, 2008, and that whole period. Uh, when we bailed them out, showed up their bottom lines, they held onto those homes, then sold them to private equity. So part of the reason why we're in a housing crunch today is because private equity owns so many homes, and they're forcing people to rent. To Ashley's point, I mean, there are people who literally are paying more money to rent than it costs to actually have a mortgage. And uh, you would think that policymakers will be trying their best to make some changes to get folks to own because when people own, they actually have a different mentality about their street, their neighbor, their, their street, their block, their neighborhood. Absolutely right. I mean, uh, the, and you just said that policymakers have determined that maybe it's not time for us to be as equitable as we think we're trying to be as a nation. And what we're trying to do is make sure that they keep more people who have been marginalized, keep us marginalized. But I think that that's where you got to give a big shout out to um, Ashley and to Ms. King for forming a group like this, which is going to allow so many more people to have a touch of that America dream or a bite at that American dream. Ashley, what is your capacity? So first of all, um, for folks who don't understand how real life works, um, yeah. how, how many how many people are you hoping uh, to assist each year? And, and explain exactly the process yeah. in terms of them, you know, paying. Uh, you know, how you're helping them actually own the home. So, so here's what we do. Um, you can go to ReadyLife.com. You can go on your on the Apple Store or Android Store right now. Download the Ready Life app. Um, our goal is to be where you bank with us. And so we underwrite you based off of data of how you spend. So take your credit score and replace that with, you know, 
You're buying gas, buying groceries, but most importantly, buying rent. How you manage cash flow is more important. If you pay your rent on time, you should be able to own a home. If your mortgage payment is equal to or less than your rent payment, we believe that you have the credit necessary to own a home. So we see you paying it because you do it through our app. You bank with us. We take that data. And then ultimately, we fund, we'll be able to fund your mortgage between six and nine months of data. Now, it, for people with bad credit, it's too many people paying these companies fifty nine ninety nine a month to do credit repair and get stuff removed off your credit report. We don't cost you anything. We just take the data that you're already using and use it to your advantage. And by doing that, we're able to process you for a loan. And it's going to be in areas uh, where there's CRA credits because the banks need to buy credits, consumer reinvestment at credits. So we're able to ultimately take these loans and we're still going to sell them back to the banks. The difference is we take a risk on people who are renters. And then once we prove that you can pay your, your mortgage, then the banks will come buy the paper. But our job is to take the risk that they want. How many folks you think you'll be helping your first year? Um, you know, I, I think we'll get into a couple thousand. I think we're going to have some target markets where the market is good. I think, you know, if you look at, um, you know, Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, Miami, uh, places like that, the market is, is, is not as bad. People are able to, where rent and mortgages are the same. If you live in a city where rent and mortgages per square foot are the same, we're a good product for you. Um, and I think that's where we're going to focus. Montel, this, this is a much different way uh, of doing this. Uh, there's so much attention that's placed on a credit score. And we, and we, we all, look, we all know even how that game is played and how it's used against people. Uh, and, and first of all, the, the credit score game is just so stupid to me. Uh, like, for instance, they tell you, oh, to keep your credit score high, don't pay off your credit card. Well, hell, I, I, last I checked, if you didn't have debt, I would think you're the kind of person folk would want buying something, but it's right. like, but it's actually held against you. I mean, and then of course we have no idea how the algorithm was created. And then you got three major bureaus. And so you might have a low score on one, mid to high on others. And then the people go, oh, we're gonna use a low score. Well, what the hell? It's, it's, a, it's a rigged game. It's absolutely ridiculous. You nailed it right on the top. It's a rigged game to make sure that people stay marginalized. This is something that, you know, I mean, we got to start facing some facts here. You know, as, as we look at America these days, we look at a nation that everybody's afraid of what black people may achieve or may not achieve. And we only represent right now 11 percent of this country. So that means that nine out of 10 people in this country are not black. So we really aren't an entity a mosque to be feared, but we are feared. And I'm glad the fact that we have Ready Life that's stepping in right now to say, you know what, we're ready to take, not a chance, but we're ready to give you the opportunity that you need. And that's what's so important about the difference of what's going on here and with, uh, you know, credit scores and all this other garbage. Uh, indeed, uh, indeed. So, uh, Ashley, you said uh, probably a couple thousand this year. And so what is your five year plan? How many people you hope to have uh, involved uh, and assisting with Ready Life? Yeah. So, you know, we would love for people to sign up now because our job is to show the banks that this is doable. So ultimately, the system is only going to work once we can prove to the banks what we already believe, that someone who pays their rent on time is going to pay their mortgage on time. So we're going to fund the first mortgages and then eventually we're going to sell them to the banks. And once the banks realize that, hey, you're right, these renters are going to pay on time, then we'll open up an entirely new marketplace and we won't be the only ones doing it. You'll see what normally happens in America. Once you prove you can do something, everybody jumps in the game. But that's what we want. I want to have the competition. I want more people out here offering credit scores as mortgages because to your point, there's the average age of the first black homeowner is 48 years old in this country. How are you're 48 years old before you buy your first home if you're black in America. You sign a 30-year mortgage, but you die at 75, which means that your mortgage is still due and you still owe debt by the time you die at 75. We're trying to take that down a decade. So not only do we want to get mortgages out the door, we want to make the mortgage borrower younger. So if you're out there right now, you got a college student who's paying rent, they should be paying it through ready because the moment they get out of college and they get their first job, they can own a home at 28 instead of 48. That is how you create wealth. Get that starter home, sell it, roll it into another home. It's so about 48. They're sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity so they can start a business, take care of their family, do whatever they need to do to take care of mom and dad. That can't happen if you're not buying a home until 48. We got to get the age younger. Share it with your yep. college students, with your, with your young people. 
Uh, indeed, uh, because I, I bought my home 1999. Let's say it was 122,000. The last appraisal was appraised at 325,000. Uh, I paid it off in 2008. Uh, my parents uh, lived there. I had my sister and her daughter used to live there. So there were three generations of my family living in the house That's right. that was paid off. So they've been able uh, to live uh, and their economics are impacted by not having to pay rent or pay a mortgage. So that's also how home ownership works. So even though I'm not there, uh, they still are able to benefit from it. That's how, again, we are able uh, to impact when we actually own as opposed to always be in a position to rent. Uh, Ash, yeah. that, appraisal, that appraisal that you talked about, you got to understand that right now in this day and age in America, you know, just because you are the owner, your appraisal probably came in about 15 to 20 percent lower than someone who's comparable house in a white neighborhood. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And trust me, for the last four years, they've been blowing up my phone with text messages and calls asking, do I want to sell in cash? And I'm like, nope, leave me the hell alone. Because uh, uh, mom and dad are doing just fine there. Ashley Bell, Montel Williams, we surely appreciate it. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Thank Thanks you, so much. All right, folks, back to our Roadblock Unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 